Well, good morning, CFC. How are we doing this morning? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, why don't we stand to our feet? We're going to praise the Lord this morning. We are uh, trying to roll out this new song called Praise. I think you've heard of it before. Uh, and so I just, uh, I just pray and uh, hope that the, the words of this song, to praise the Lord with all our hearts, become our song. So let's praise this morning. Sovereign, I'll praise cause you reign, I'll praise cause you rose and defeated the grave, I'll praise cause you're faithful, I'll praise cause you're true, I'll praise cause there's nobody greater than you, I praise, I praise cause you're sovereign, I'll praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave, I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than We got to sing that through one more time. This is our chance to praise God, amen? This is our chance to praise God. I'll praise when I feel it. 
sound My praise is the shout That brings Jericho down As long as I'm breathing I've got a reason to pray You're sovereign, I praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave, I praise cause you're faithful, I praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you, I praise, I praise cause you're sovereign, I praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave, I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true. I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward. We're going to continue our worship today in the giving of the tithe and the offering. Can I just encourage you that you can never outgive God? Hey, God doesn't need your money. He wants your heart, right? And a lot of times the two can be tied together. This is an expression of worship towards God. If you've never had a chance to exercise that part of faith in your life, I want to encourage you to start today. God is faithful. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much that you are in our midst today, that your presence is here. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you move among these seats and and just do what you want to do within us. Father, it's our honor to be able to bring back to you what is yours and over and above as well. So we commit everything that's given today, Father, to the kingdom. And we pray a blessing on it and a blessing over every giver as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, take a few minutes. Feel free to have a seat. Take a few minutes, and we'll, or just a moment, we're going to check out some announcements on the screen. People are like, finally, God answered a prayer. That guy is quiet. <laughs> there we go. Well, give me a minute. We're going to go old school, right? I'm going to walk you through our announcements here in a second. Hey, and look, this is a great plug for this awesome app we have called Church Center. <laughs> so we're going to use that right now. There we go. Okay, so a few announcements, just a few things to keep uh, up to speed on. This is Vision Sunday. We're so happy that you're here. This is a chance for us to kind of roll out what God is doing. 
what his plan is, we believe, for the next little while. So let's just all gather together, just by spirit as well today. Put on your listening ears and allow God to speak to you. There's a nursing home service that is uh, directly following uh, this service, I believe. Is that right? And that uh, nursing home service? Yep. And that is at uh, uh, Riverview Adult Residence at 2.30 p.m. We have Growth Track. I want to kind of walk you through that. Growth Track is starting this Tuesday uh, right here. And I'm telling you, it's going to be an awesome opportunity to grow in your faith. Uh, We're going to go through through some discipleship training, and it's going to be a chance for you to really get back to the basics and roots of your faith. Why do we live the way we live, right? And how are we to act uh, around those that don't know Jesus yet? So we're going to learn all about that. I want to encourage everyone to come out. Uh, It's only six weeks, and it's starting this Tuesday, September 12th at 7 p.m. Next steps. Who's new to the church in the last, like, year? Put your hands in the air. All kinds of hands. That's awesome. Welcome to church. If you haven't been through Next Steps yet, I want to encourage you next week, back in the Next Steps space at the back right of the sanctuary, meet Vicki and I there. We would love to be able to connect with you, tell you a little bit about ourselves, about the church, what we believe, and opportunities for you to get plugged in here. This next one I'm really excited about. Next week, we're doing a night of worship along with uh, Rock Church in Anaganish. Whoa, give it up for Anna Ganesh. Absolutely. Hey, listen, we are going to make a point of getting outside the four walls of this building. Amen? There is a world that needs to hear about Jesus. Amen? So we're going to do that. So next week, Anna Ganesh is going to take place uh, on campus at St. of X. And who would, who would attest to the fact that there are students that need to know about Jesus, right? There's a group, there's a generation that need to hear the name of Jesus and why he's relevant today why he can be real in your life and change you inside and, and prepare you for eternity. So we're going to meet at St. of X next week. It's only, it's only going to be for an hour or so. It's uh, 6 p.m., and it's going to be in the McKay Room in the Bloomfield Center. It's all online. It's going to be uh, in a weekly email, too. But I want to encourage you, if you're part of this church body, come on out. Come on out and see what God's going to do, not only in Pictou County, but in Antigonish County and all over this province. Amen? That's going to take place next week. Young adults, any young adults in the house? Come on, give it up. Absolutely. we got a great young adults group. Zoe back there. Uh, and that's awesome. So we, we meet every, well, I say we. I'm old and crusty. I don't meet. But these guys are young, and they meet every Thursday at 7 p.m. downstairs. It's a dynamic opportunity to learn about Jesus with some people your own age and uh, a chance to connect uh, for community too. Prayer, quick reminder. Uh, Our church is all about prayer. Who would agree that everything is built on prayer, amen? Our faith and prayer, amen? Absolutely. It's great to gather together, great to have community, but if we're not doing it through the fuel of prayer, right, and faith, then why are we doing it? So I want to encourage you, uh, Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., and Saturday nights at 7 p.m., we meet here to pray, amen, and believe for you. Let's continue our worship now. As the team continues, oh, yeah, kids. How many kids do we have here? All kinds? Wave. Yes. Kids, you know what? You can go downstairs to Kids Church. Just follow all the uh, folks in the uh, orange T-shirts and have a great morning.
be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know that you'll do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Why would he fail now? He 
He won't fail. 
Father God, we love you today. Father God, we, as this song said, Father, we give everything over to you today. We lay those things down at your feet, God, that are holding us back. At the altar, we come for a place of exchange, and we say, take the old baggage. We don't want it anymore. We want freedom, and we want life. So, Father, I declare that in the house today. I declare freedom and life in the house today. Freedom and life over your children today. I declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for ears to hear today, God. Not what I say, but what Holy Spirit says. Those that are here today that may not know you, I pray that with that gentle whisper, you would introduce yourself to them. Show them how much you love them, that you're real. That this isn't a tradition, it's a life-giving exercise to come and meet with the creator of the heavens and the earth. To have blueprints for our lives downloaded to us and to walk with confidence as sons and daughters of the Most High. So, Father, we commit this service to you today. Have your way. Holy Spirit, take preeminence. Presence of God, rest upon us today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thanks, team. That was awesome. Well, listen, before you sit down, stand back up. Take, uh, don't sit down. Boy, oh, boy, everybody gets so comfortable so quick, eh? Take a minute and meet some people. Walk around. Come on now. Meet a couple people you don't know. I know there's some people like, oh, I don't want to. Amen. All right. Now that you're all wound up, find your seat. God is good. Amen. Hey, isn't it awesome to be part of a church community? Hey, part of a church family? I don't know how people do it without that. Anyway, God's faithful. Hey, if you're new here today, welcome to church. It's an honor to have you here. Um, I didn't mention it um, during the announcements, but if you are new here, and you'd like to connect with us, we would love to connect with you. Just head back to our Connect desk at the back of the service, or back of the sanctuary after the service, fill out a Connect card, and we will be sure to connect with you. So welcome to church. Whether you're here in person or online, it's great to have you here. I'm going to stick to my notes today because it's Vision Sunday as best I can. If Holy Spirit does something different, hey, we're going to run with it. But as best as I can because there's a lot to go through and I want to lay out, to a degree, kind of what I believe God is saying for this coming year, at least for the next few months, as to what should be on our hearts, I believe, and the direction we're to, we're to go. So last week, who was your default? Or is he the guy that you cry out to in the midst of trouble and put in your back pocket until trouble comes your way again? Is he your all in all? Can I encourage you today that to live this life successfully, to live this life victoriously as a follower of Christ, he needs to be your all in all. Amen? He needs to be your go-to. You need to talk to him daily. Allow him to talk to you and do life with him. I want to expand on what she said today, as I believe it lines up with what the Holy Spirit has been placing on my heart for this year, for Vision Sunday 2023 and beyond. Last year, if you were here, you probably don't remember. Lots happened in the last year. Man, oh man, it's been busy. But on Vision Sunday last year, the call was this, coming together. That was the, if you want to call it the theme or what have you, coming together. And I believe by the grace of God and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, that's happened in this house, amen? There's a coming together. There's been growth. But more importantly, there's been unity, okay? 
And that's what it's all about. You know, do you know that God works in the midst of unity? He works when people come together and they focus on him and he's their go-to. And I believe there's unity in the house and that is awesome. But I believe that God is now asking us to build beyond those things that have become familiar. And familiarity to a degree is not bad. It allows you to get your feet about you. It allows you to gauge what's happening, but it's not a good place to camp out. It's not a good place to set up shop. Familiarity is something that can turn into apathy and lethargy. And neither of those things are kingdom principles, right? And so God's beckoning us, I believe, in this season to move forward, to build beyond. And there's a time and a place, like I mentioned, for restoration. Absolutely, that should be ongoing. And for reestablishment. But again, the danger there is not to stay too long. Don't allow familiarity to kind of breed contempt and complacency. So God has called us beyond the familiar to the unknown. Who likes the unknown? Hey, you got to tell the truth. You're in church. Anybody like the unknown? Oh, a few hands. Okay. The rest of us, ooh, you know, the unknown. It's a scary prospect. So it's unknown to us, but can I tell you a truth that I hope will make you feel better? That although it's unknown to us, it's very much known to our Heavenly Father. Do you know that God has your life mapped out, right? That he knit you together in your mother's womb. That he loves you beyond anything that you could ever imagine. That's the God we serve. So even though we step out into the unknown, if we step out as those that listen and accept what our Heavenly Father says, and then step by faith, he's right there, right? And he leads us from the unknown into the known. So this year, I believe God is asking us to build beyond what we see and what we know as the norm. To establish a foundation for what he wants to do in our church and in our community. I don't know if you sense it in your spirit, but I feel there's a very real sense of expectation in in this season of our church. There's an undercurrent. There's almost a riptide in a good sense that God wants to explode on the scene. That God wants to manifest his power amongst us. But he doesn't want us to keep it here. Amen? It needs to spill out. It needs to go beyond these four walls. He's calling us to build beyond. As we do that, as we build beyond, like I mentioned, the main component in all of that is faith. Because if we go by what we see, well, you know what? This could happen or that can happen. But if we say, no, no, no. I put my faith in God, and I step out and believe that as I do that, my steps are ordered. They're not chaotic. They're not random. No, no, they're ordered. He's got a plan for me as I listen to him, but we need to do it in faith as faith is the main component. It's a building block. It's a pillar of our faith, amen, of our, yeah, of our faith, of our belief, of our trust in God. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says this, For we live by faith and not by sight. Your human nature says, what do you see? Gauge it and respond accordingly. But kingdom culture says, no, no. You listen to the Almighty, you take his hand and you follow. And that's living by faith. This is a statement of fact for those that want to live a successful, fulfilling kingdom life. We can't rely on what we physically see or be led by emotion or even past events. No, faith is the change agent that opens the doors to the divine. We need to be those that step out in faith. Amen? Romans 10, 17 goes on to say, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The focus of our faith can't derive from a man-made agenda or best laid plan. It can't come from human charisma. It doesn't work that way. But rather, what is God saying? What is the Almighty telling us? Where is God leading us? This requires, as Pastor Joanna pointed out last week, that we become intently aware of the gentle whisper of God. That we don't be distracted by those things around us, but by faith, we silence ourselves and listen for the gentle whisper tuned into hearing his voice through prayer 
and reading his word. And finally, Luke 137 says, for nothing is impossible for God. Amen. As we establish that we are those that live by faith and not by sight, as we allow the Holy Spirit to download to us the plans from our Heavenly Father, then we move forward in confidence declaring that nothing is impossible with God. Many times when we hear about the life of Christ, the life of Jesus, the focus is on his character. And I want to talk about Jesus today. I don't think you could talk about anything better than Jesus, amen? We're going to talk about Jesus today. And while his character is so important, today I want to focus on the intentionality of Jesus during his years of ministry. Most theologians agree that Jesus' ministry timeline was a mere three years. In three years, listen, he effectively changed the course of human history. He changed the trajectory of human history. He took the natural and dropped the vine into it, right? He changed everything about our future, right? And those things from our past, have a po- there's a power of restoration to allow us to live a victorious life. He did that in three years. Of course, we could say, well, he is God, and that is absolutely true. He is. But during those three years, he modeled for us for you and I, how to navigate our years of ministry. When I say the word ministry, many of us limit the meaning of that word to how you help out here on a Sunday morning. For example, you may say, my ministry is to usher or prepare coffee or help out with the tech team. But in reality, ministry means something much more expansive. Jesus had three years of ministry. That didn't mean that he sat on the coffee counter for three years, right? He did something much more incredible, and so can you. Ministry means serving in the function of a priest by offering up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. That's ministry. 1 Peter 2.5 tells us that as followers of Jesus, each of us are priests, part of the holy priesthood. And the role of a priest, listen, catch this. The role of a priest is one who serves as a bridge builder between God and humanity. That's what you are as followers of Christ. You're bridge builders. We are bridge builders between a lost and broken world and the hope of glory. Think about that. It's quite a mantle, quite a calling, and it's on all of us. That's our ministry. In all of our frailties and imperfections, who here is frail and imperfect? My hand is going to be the highest. (laughs) Jesus himself calls us to partner with him in building his church by extending our ministry into a broken world. Amen? As followers of Jesus, Scripture tells us that each of us are priests and Christ is our high priest. Hebrews 4.14 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. That's our foundation point. And Jesus was a builder. Like, if you look at the life of Jesus, it's awesome. He was a builder. Scripture tells us that he was actually trained as a carpenter by his earthly father, Joseph. Even in the natural, he was a builder. Carpentry requires what? It requires intent, It requires attention to detail, and it requires purpose. Carpenters are those that follow plans and articulate the finished product to others before it ever takes shape and becomes a reality. Does that sound like your heavenly father? That's the God we serve. And Jesus was a carpenter and a builder. The apostle Paul described himself as a master builder in Corinthians 3.10, according to the grace which was given to him by God. That's the most important part of that scripture, right? It wasn't of of a man's volition. Again, it wasn't a, a great laid plan or a thought. No, no, it was downloaded to him by the Most High. And in fact, we are all called to be builders. Christ invites us to come alongside him and, like I mentioned, to build his church. So how do we build? 
What do we do? What does that practically look like? Where do we start? I can't think of a better life to model when it comes to building than the life of Christ. So to truly embrace building with divine intention, we must follow the example of Christ. In effect, we must live like Jesus. We have to live like Jesus. That's what we're called to do. So how do we live like Jesus? How do we build as Jesus built? Look, you could talk forever and a day about that. But I want to settle into just a couple of points, just a couple of things, a few tidbits. And right now, I want to encourage you. Say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me today? What do you want to reveal to me today as we jump into this? And he will. We could never accurately articulate all that Jesus represents to humankind. That being said, uh, Scripture reveals that Christ is our ultimate example to follow. Matthew 16, 24, then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. We're all to follow Christ. Paul encourages the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. He's not saying, hey, let's go rogue, follow me. No, no, no. He's saying, Follow me as I follow Christ, right? If you want to follow an example in the practical, okay, but I'm following an example in the divine, right? He's a follower of Christ. We're all called to be followers of Christ. Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Restorer, our greatest example of how to live life as a builder. There are so many ways to describe Jesus in so many instances, but like I say, I just want to settle into a couple. Listen, number one. Jesus was an esteem builder. He was an esteem builder. Now, I want to clarify that. He wasn't saying, hey, I'm going to give people self-based esteem so they can think that all these accolades come from them. No, 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 no. Listen to my heart here. Jesus healed lepers, lepers, ate with tax collectors, accepted Samaritans, and died for sinners. His love for the person exceeded their circumstances. He was an esteem builder. We're called to do the same. While we may not have lepers and tax collectors and Samaritans in our circle of influence, our province is full of people written off by society. Full of them. You don't have to go far. Deemed too far gone and not worth the effort of reaching. I want to encourage you in this season, let's be followers of Christ and be esteem builders to those that have been marginalized. We're going to have opportunity to reach out to the downcast and the disheartened, to show them the love of Christ in practical ways, and in doing so, allowing our Heavenly Father to restore dignity and worth to them. Amen? Loving marginalized people is not an optional upgrade for a church, by the way. It's the way we look like Jesus. It's not something that we say, you know what, let's try that and see see if it works. No. That's our calling. We are called to look like Jesus to the broken world. Amen? Matthew 25, 34 to 36 says this. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. And I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and what did you do? You clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Right? He wants us to connect with those that are marginalized the same way we would connect with him. Think about that. To come to them and show compassion and love and unconditional opportunities to grow in him. So let's feed the hungry. Let's befriend the stranger clothe the lacking and care for the sick, not just as a humanitarian effort, no, but rather as an avenue to introduce a broken world to our Savior. Amen? We are going to make steps, practical steps, to do that. I want to be part of a church that's active. I don't know about you, but I want to be part of a church that's active. Amen? Number two, Jesus was a deed builder. What does that mean? Well, Jesus was countercultural when it came to establishing kingdom culture. 
in doing so, he wasn't rogue or out of control, but rather he was simply listening to Father God and obeying him as Father God was talking to him. John 12, 49 to 50 says this, For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. He didn't add, he didn't take away, he listened. I keep going back to that scripture that I just cannot shake in Proverbs 4, I think it's 4.12, where it talks about a child being, you know, kind of following the lead of his or her parent. And it says this, I listen and I accept what you say. And you lead me in wise counsel. And you set my feet on solid ground. And when you say walk, I walk unhampered. And when you say run, I run without tripping. That's listening to Father God. That's following the deeds and the teaching of our Father God. Jesus took the initiative to connect with people outside of what would be, would be considered normal protocol. Listen, he went out and encountered people. Jesus went out and encountered people. He didn't sit on a mountaintop or in a palace and wait for people to come to him. No, he was on a mission to introduce people to a God that would save them for eternity. And he knew that his time on earth was limited. Do you know that your time on earth is limited? Not a fun conversation to have, but it's true. Hey? Think about it in the scope of eternity, you know. At the top end, some of us might be here for 100 years or a little less. That doesn't, that's, that's, think how quickly the last year went. That puts things in perspective, doesn't it? What are you doing on your mission? Jesus was intentional because he knew he was on mission for a short period of time. We need to be intentional because we know we're on mission for a short period of time. Did you know that the majority of Jesus' interactions occurred in the workplace and the marketplace? Think about that. With James and John, with the Samaritan woman, and with the lame man, to name just a few. Many other encounters took place in people's homes. Not just on Sundays, or not just on Sabbath. No, they took place in people's homes. At Peter's house, house with his mother-in-law, and at Zac- Zacchaeus' house, for example. And what did he teach them when he met with them? He taught them that the values and goals of earthly society was, in many aspects, so different than that of kingdom culture. I want to encourage us in this next season to be those that are deed builders the same way Christ was, that we go out and encounter people and speak life into areas that are full of, that's full of death, right? That we take initiative, that we realize that we're on mission, and we follow the leading of our Heavenly Father. The lessons or deeds that Jesus taught and modeled are so countercultural that they stand out and demand a response when we live them out. Do you know that we live in a relatively dark world? Who would agree? It's not getting any lighter, is it? It's a dark world. And what happens when you put light in a dark room? It stands out. So when you start to live countercultural and you start to embrace kingdom culture and you live that out, you stand out whether you want to or not. And a response is demanded of people. And what's the outflow of that? Here's the outflow of it. People may not understand it. They may not even like it on the, t- on the surface. But this is what happens. They sense the aroma of Christ on you. They sense the aroma of Christ on you because you encountered them. You lived a life of deed building, a life of teaching biblical principles, of walking it out, and they sense the aroma of Christ on you. They may not understand it, but they are drawn to kingdom truth. Why? Because they were created to follow it. But they may never experience it if you don't let your light shine. Amen? So we need to be those that are deed builders, that go out and encounter the lost. Let's follow Christ's example this year and be deed builders within those around us. Number three, Jesus was a team builder. I love this. I love this. Jesus strategically built a team to continue to further his message once he had ascended. He was intentional about that. He had his team of 12, and within that he had another 
more intimate team of three. Imperfect, flawed, and broken, yet God had a plan for each of them. Jesus was a team builder, and I want to tell you, in this season of the church, as the Holy Spirit guides and directs, God willing, teams will continue to be raised up in this house to bring glory to God. Ministry teams, outreach teams, and prayer teams, to mention a few. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. But you know what? In order to build a strong house, you need a strong foundation. Amen? In order to speak life, you need people that are invested in kingdom culture. And that's what we're going to develop over the next year. When Solomon, Solomon built a temple and Nehemiah reestablished the wall, they didn't just fill holes, but rather Solomon sought out craftsmen to do detailed work. And Nehemiah established families to rebuild the walls in front of their own homes. God is calling each of us to find our places in the church to team up in this season. I want to encourage you, if you've been sitting and taking things in, hey, that's all, that's all good for a season. But I want, to, I want to encourage you, it's time to step up. If you haven't stepped up, it's time to step up. Because there's lots to do in kingdom, amen? There's lots to do to reach a broken world. It's great to come here on a Sunday. It's great to kind of take things in. But God's saying, hey, it's time to go. Let's take the baton and run. And you are needed. So I would love to see each and every one of us connect over the next year to see what God's going to do in our community. And number four, here's my last one. Jesus was a dream builder. He was a dream builder. Sometimes we think God takes care of the necessities and ignores the dreams. Uh Uh-uh. No, no. He knows your dreams. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows what you're after. His timing may be different than yours. That doesn't mean he's not you know, wants to, doesn't want to see them come to fruition. He does. But Jesus was a dream builder. The very presence of Jesus changed lives and restored dreams. The man at the pool of Bethesda, sitting there hopeless, lame for years, had his dreams restored in a moment when he encountered Jesus. Think of that moment. Think of the blood flowing back into those legs and, this, and the muscle reforming and standing up after sitting there for so long. Because he encountered Jesus. Mary Magdalene, considered the lowest of low in society, was restored to dignity. Was able to dream again because she encountered the presence of Jesus. His chosen disciples were told by the greatest man to have ever lived. The God-man that changed history forever. This is what he told them. Think about this. After everything they saw, the miracles and all the outflow of this incredible life. This is what he says to them in John 14, 12. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Who wants to see that? I know I do, right? I want to see things happen, absolutely. And it's a promise from our Heavenly Father, amen? Listen, Jesus is in the business of releasing and restoring dreams in every one of us. Those things that you've heard him tell you years ago, Those things he's whispered to you in the secret place that perhaps only you know. It's a dream. I've got a plan for you. You were created for this, and and you've put it away in your heart. You've prayed into it, and you've given it consideration over the years, and it hasn't quite happened. Those things that you heard him tell you that he wants to manifest in your life, And you know, it can be tough if you're in a season where you are feeling hopeless and you're like, that dream is quashed, that dream is dead. But I believe we're coming into a season where Jesus wants to have those dreams restored into reality. Amen? Right? For people to walk in hope and walk in an understanding that those dreams weren't just something that they thought, but rather it was a divine intervention. And now it's time to come to life. I believe that's the season we're coming in. We need to continue to trust and obey him. Can I tell you something? Ridiculous obedience results in radical miracles. When you are obedient during tough times, when life is traumatic, when things aren't going your way, and you say, I don't care, I know that I know that I know that I know that I serve a living God, and I'm going to obey him, it opens the door for radical miracles to happen. I don't know about you today, but I want to live out those things he's placed in my heart. 
those things I hold dear, those things I've heard him whisper to me, I want to see those things accomplished, those things he said about me and those things he wants to do through me. So as we live like Jesus this year, let's be those that share his love. We need to be those that practically share his love. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to be sharing his love by going outside of our four walls into our community this year. I mentioned it earlier, but I want to camp on it again for a sec. Next Sunday, September 17th at 6 p.m., we're going to gather at Santa Fe University with our friends from Rock Church to worship and encourage anyone that would gather with us about the goodness of God. I don't want to stand still while a generation is going to hell. I'm not interested in that. I want to make a difference. I don't know about you, but I do. It's one thing to say it. It's something else to get out and do it. And he's calling us to do it. I want to encourage you. Be accounted for. Show up. There's a university full of young men and women that perhaps don't know Jesus as a personal Savior. Maybe it's an opportunity for us to do something. We have a 200-seat auditorium. We want to fill it. Why? Simply because Jesus said go. He didn't say stay. He said go. Mark 16, 15, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So we're simply going to go. Will it develop into something? Honestly, we don't know. But we do know this. There are university students 40 minutes away that may not have the opportunity to hear the gospel, and we want to fill that void if only for a night. Who knows? Maybe longer, but if only for a night. Who knows what he will put on someone's heart here today or watching online that may want to step out of faith and help see a generation come to know him in a real way. Plant something. Be part of something. Get excited about something beyond the Monday to Friday, right? Think about eternity beyond our natural needs. And just like last year, in addition, we're going to be part of Love Atlantic again. I don't know if you know about Love Atlantic, but it's awesome. It's a great... Uh, it's a great situation. There's churches all over Atlantic Canada that are part of it, and we are going to do the same thing, and we are going to reach out and help our community in real practical ways. Here's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to start an elementary school pantry program. You know, there's little ones going to school every day with growling stomachs. Doesn't that break your heart? So CFC, you and I, We'll be contributing to existing breakfast programs in elementary schools in Pictou County. We're going to start gathering donations right away. Donations of packaged granola bars, applesauce pouches, and individual sizes, boxes of raisins. And we're going to do that right up until September 24th. Why? To feed stomach? Sure, yeah, absolutely. But further, more importantly, to show little ones, to show teachers, to show parents that Jesus loves them. Right? That we're not just you know, in a community and apart from a community. No, no, no. We feel the pain. We're part of what they're going through. Jesus would be there. I believe Jesus would be in an elementary school handing out that stuff. He just would. He welcomed the little children, didn't he? So let's be part of that. There'll be opportunity for you to be able to give out in the uh, lobby over the next couple weeks. We're also going to continue with our Compassion Canada sponsorship. You know, we have to think beyond our borders too, don't we? There's people all over the world who are suffering, so we're going to continue to uh, support um, our sponsor child, Maxana, from Haiti. She's 16 years old now, and CFC has been sponsoring her for almost four years. So you are responsible for changing that young lady's life and all of those in her sphere of influence. And so what are we going to do? We're going to have a church pancake brunch. That's going to take place on sub Sunday, September 24th. That's two weeks. Mark it in your day timer. Put it in your phone, whatever the case may be. After church, we're going to meet downstairs and outside, whatever the case may be, for a pancake brunch, and uh, it'll be by donation, right, so that we can continue to uh, put life into the lives of those who are disenfranchised. The next one is we're going to be part of the Pictou County Food Bank Initiative, too. Those that are feeling food insecurity right now, it's a real thing. So CFC will be contributing to those in our community who find themselves in need. And we'll be collecting donations of non-perishable food items beginning now until September 
24th. Again, out in the lobby. The next one is Tierman House. Again, those that have been hurt by society will be collecting donations of toothbrushes, toothpaste, soap, shampoo, all-purpose cleaners, paper towel, all that stuff until September 24th. Let's be those that are part of restoring dignity to the lost. Amen? Those that feel shame or what have you, let's be part of the answer and show them Christ. And the last one is this, Biola's Place. CFC will be contributing to those in our community who find themselves in need, those that are homeless, those that need mental health counseling, those that just need, need, need. So we're going to do the same thing. We are going to donate what they need. Vicki will have further details on that as well. Beyond that, if you're able to take time to make a meal for someone in need and visit those who do not have the opportunity to gather weekly at church, do it. Get out and do it. Amen? Get to know your neighbors and what they need. Influence them for Christ. The last thing I want to mention is this, is we are going to start a vision fund. I'm excited about this, too. What's a vision fund? To tell you the truth, I don't know. But I know God's calling us to do something, and I know you need to build a foundation before you build a house. So we are going to establish a vision fund. We're going to build beyond. If you look at the story of the temple that Solomon built, it was an amazing structure. Why, well, why was it built? If you read through 1 Kings, it was built to house the presence of God, but it all started by building a foundation, allowing the rest of the structure to come together as God directed Solomon. 1 Kings 6, 37 to 40 says this, The foundation of the temple of the Lord was laid in the fourth year, and in the eleventh year, the eighth month, the temple was finished in all its details according to its specifications. Those specifications downloaded by God to Solomon could not have been fulfilled if the foundation wasn't built. I think we need to be those that start to build beyond what we see as the norm. Build beyond what we see as the familiar. Be prepared when God says go, we're ready to go. So we're going to launch that right away. I want to encourage you, whether you're a business owner, whether you're, you work for whatever, it doesn't matter. Start to pray into this. Say, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do for the vision of not only this church, but this community in this province? What are you asking me to do? So that when God says, hey, look, it's time to do this, it may sound audacious. It may sound unreasonable to man, but we don't live by what we see, amen? We live by faith. So I want to encourage us to start praying into that vision fund. Start to believe that God's going to do something amazing in our county and beyond and into our province. So we're going to bring this up from time to time. I want to encourage you to continue to pray into it. I'm going to invite the worship team back. And as they come back, let me just, um, yeah, let me just share my heart. I want to be part of a church, and I believe you do too, that's alive and moving and growing and spilling out into the community. Amen? Not just gathering, not just ticking a box, but rather impacting for eternity. Let's be those people. A church that's impacting those entrenched in popular culture and introducing them to kingdom culture. Seeing things that seem so radical to people, so different to people, that they start to call you in on it a little bit. What do you mean by that? Where does that type of thinking come from? And you're able to share kingdom principles with you. I want to be part of something that's larger than the familiar and builds into the unknown. Listen, while we have the baton, and by the way, everybody in this church, if you call CFC your home, you're holding a baton. Not for a long time, but you're holding a baton. This is your ministry time. This is your bridge building time. When God is calling you to think outside the box, He may be calling you to sacrifice a little bit. He may be calling you to put your faith in those things you can't see that right now you call unknown. But He said, trust me, I'll make them known to you. I want to encourage you to be part of what's going on. 
to step out in faith this year with our time, our giving, and what we've always considered to be the norm. Let's step beyond it. Let's go beyond it. Let's be part of something that's exciting and moving. I would rather be running beside a big rock that's moving and guiding it than trying to push one that's not moving. Amen? Right? Let's run beside something that's moving. Let's steward those things that God says, great, awesome. I'll honor your yes. I'll honor your step of faith. Now let's go. Right? While we have the baton, let's be those people. Let's be those that build a foundation beyond what we see and allow God to do some incredible things in our midst. Can I tell you, he wants to do some incredible things in our midst. He lays, he lays out the blueprints, but you and I are his hands and his feet extended. Amen? He's chosen us to partner with him. So this is a day of celebration. I know it's, there's lots to contemplate. There's lots to think about. But this is a day of celebration. It's a day where we say, hey, look, we have an opportunity to partner with God. Let's jump in with both feet. Let's not put our toes in the water. No, no, let's go for it. Let's see what he'll do if we start to obey in ridiculous ways and, and believe for incredible life-transforming miracles. Amen? Just wait and see. So as the team plays, I'm going to ask everybody to stand to their feet. We're going to celebrate the goodness of of God. Get excited in the house, right? Shake off those heavy bands. Move around a little bit if you need to. Absolutely. Wake up if you fell asleep half an hour ago, because <laughs> God wants to do something amazing. So as the team pray, uh, plays, let's celebrate the goodness of God. Listen, let's get excited about what he wants to do. Don't settle into what you see, but rather focus on what he wants us to see. Amen? Let's live by faith. Amen. Praise in the valley. I'll praise on the mountain. I'm sure I'll praise when I'm doubting I'll praise when I'm numbered praise when surrounded cause praise is the water my enemies drowning as long as I'm breathing I've got As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? You're sovereign, I'll praise cause you reign, I'll praise cause you rose and defeated the grave, I'll praise cause you're faithful, I'll praise cause you're true, I'll praise cause there's nobody greater than you, I'll praise, I'll praise cause you're sovereign, I'll praise cause you reign, I'll praise cause you rose and defeated the grave, I'll praise cause you're faithful, I'll praise cause you're true, I'll 
show them love. Look, in a, in a postmodern society where people are saying God's dead, he's not relevant, he doesn't exist, we're going to get out and say he's alive. He is real, right? We're going to go out and say, hey, look, I'll show you the fruit of it. He is real. We love you because Christ loved you because he died for you. Let me introduce you to him. We want to be those people, amen? And we're going to be those people. Father, we thank you so much for your word today. Holy Spirit, we thank you for just settling upon your people today. Now I pray that seed that's been sown would fall on good soil. I pray that it would be watered. Holy Spirit, speak to your people. Holy Spirit, urge your people. Holy Spirit, convict your people because we want to be part of something larger than ourselves. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. I pray a blessing upon everyone here today. In Jesus' name, everybody said... Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. I'll praise because you're sovereign. I'll praise because you reign. I'll praise because you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise because you're faithful. I'll praise because you're true. I'll praise because there's nobody greater than you. You're sovereign, I'll praise because you reign, praise because you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise because you're faithful, praise because you're true, praise because there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Bye.